Boba Fett. It was this minor character from the original trilogy that started an entire army of clones, as well as all of the Mandalorians. In fact, he served as the inspiration for the creation of Jango Fett, and after that the story of warlike men in armor began to grow like a snowball. Today I will tell you the entire journey of the legendary bounty hunter, from his birth on Kamino to his fall into the jaws of Sarlacc. Bounty hunter Jango Fett agreed to give his genetic code to the Kaminoans to become the model for creating the first clone soldiers that Master Sifo Dias ordered from the planet Kamino. Along with the advance Jango received, he ordered a clone from the Kaminoans with no genetic modifications or accelerated growth to raise him and make him his son. Jango named him Boba. Little Boba did not attend school and received lessons from his father, watching him work as a bounty hunter. Boba had the call sign Alpha, and his twin sister was called Omega. However, the Kaminoans kept the girl a secret. Ten years later, Boba witnesses a conversation between his father and Jedi Obi-Wan Kenobi in which he suspects something amiss. It all escalated into an open fight between the thug and the Jedi on the landing platform of the Slave One ship. The mercenary was able to escape and traveled to Geonosis. But Obi-Wan himself flew in after him, intent on finding out who his employer was. Boba watched the execution of Amidala, Jedi Anakin Skywalker, and Obi-Wan Kenobi go awry when the Jedi, led by Mace Windu, showed up on Geonosis to rescue the stranded Amidala, Anakin Skywalker, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. During the battle, Boba watched his father while hiding. Jango killed Rick and decided to fight Mace Windu, but was beheaded by a Jedi right in front of Boba. The Grand Army of the Republic and the Separatist droid army then continued the battle in the air, leaving the arena. Boba came out of his hiding place to retrieve his father's helmet. He was angry and vowed to take revenge on Mace. After Geonosis, Boba joined a team of bounty hunters that included Aura Singh, Bosk, and Castus to avenge Mace Windu for Jango's death. Boba and the bounty hunters devised a plan to assassinate the Jedi Master aboard the Republic ship Endurance. Boba posed as a young cadet clone with the nickname Lucky. No one aboard the Endurance knew who he really was. Each clone was able to participate in target shooting and they all missed, except Boba, because he was using the skills his father had taught him. Later, during a tour of the ship, Boba eluded the other clones and made his way to Windu's quarters, where he stealthily planted a bomb that would be triggered by a laser stretch in the doorway. Windu, however, did not enter his quarters, but a clone soldier did, leading to his untimely death, forcing the entire ship into a state of alert. Singh instructed Boba via comlink to sabotage the Endurance's reactor core, thereby killing everyone on the ship. But Boba didn't want to kill everyone. His only goal was to kill Windu. Nevertheless, Boba carried out the instructions, again eluding his fellow clones, before he was caught by a patrolman, who called security. The two got into a brief scuffle near the core, before Boba was able to stun the clone with the soldier's own blaster. He then fired a shot at the central command console. Most of the hull was immediately destroyed in the ensuing explosion, while Windu and Skywalker were nearly blown into space. Due to the critical damage Endurance sustained, the crew began to abandon ship. Boba, whose identity has not yet been revealed, and the other young clones were sealed into an escape pod and ejected into space. But Boba sabotaged the capsule to separate himself from the other fugitives. The capsule was intercepted by Slave One, led by Singh and Bosk, who called Boba a traitor who spared his enemies. Boba was given the choice of either staying with the clone cadets or leaving with the bounty hunters, and Boba somewhat reluctantly decided to leave with the bounty hunters. The team headed for the nearby planet Vancor, where a Republic vessel had crashed after an explosion. Once there, they captured Admiral Killian as well as the clone commander Pons. Hoping to set another trap for Windu, Boba adapted his father's old helmet as an explosive on the bridge of the ship that would detonate if Windu touched it. The Jedi Master and Skywalker arrived shortly afterward. The helmet exploded just after Windu noticed it and remembered that Jango had a son. It was then that he realized that Boba was the one who had tried to kill him. Windu and Skywalker were not killed in the ensuing explosion, 
but were trapped under the wreckage of the collapsing ship. Watching the explosion, Boba and the other bounty hunters assumed that Windu had been killed and wanted to take his body. However, some of his comrades objected, believing that three captives were already enough to earn a good reward from Count Dooku. But Singh sided with Boba, and the team set out to find Windu's body. As they entered the ship, they encountered R2-D2, who tried to slow their progress by throwing debris at them and closing doors in their path. Unable to reach the bridge, Singh made the decision to use Slave 1 to destroy the rest of Endurance, guaranteeing Windu's death. Before Slave 1 could be used, the bounty hunters heard an explosion caused by R2-D2. They believed Windu had survived and blocked all communications. However, R2-D2 was able to escape in another fighter and survived a brief firefight with Slave 1 before jumping into hyperspace to Coruscant, where he successfully found help at the Jedi Temple and was able to bring reinforcements to rescue Windu and Skywalker. Meanwhile, the bounty hunters decided to use the hostages to lure Windu into a trap. Singh took responsibility for setting the trap, and sent a message to the Jedi Temple stating that they were holding Republic prisoners. Singh told Boba to personally execute Commander Pons during the handover, but he refused, as his goal was to kill Windu, not the other prisoners. Singh herself executed Pons by throwing him into space, and Boba's relationship with her and the other bounty hunters began to deteriorate. Boba also objected to this treatment of the other prisoners, going so far as to show compassion by providing them with water. Nevertheless, a transfer to the Jedi Temple eventually put the Jedi on their trail. Except that the Order sent Master Plo Koon and Padawan Ahsoka Tano instead of Master Windu. The group soon took refuge on Florum, where Singh planned to seek help from Hondo Onaka, a pirate, and her former lover. Onaka refused to help her, but he wasn't about to stand in her way either. Castus contacted the bounty hunters on Coruscant and offered information about Boba and the others. Singh overheard his conversation and executed him, leaving Boba terrified as he began to realize that he had made a mistake by teaming up with the bounty hunters against Windu. Despite Castus's betrayal, it was his transfer to Coruscant that allowed the Jedi to locate Boba and the others on Florum. Singh tried to sell the captives to the two Jedi who arrived on the planet. Both sides ended up attacking each other. The bounty hunters sabotaged and tried to escape, but Boba was captured and Singh escaped in a speeder. Kuhn interrogated Boba, who refused to reveal the whereabouts of the hostages despite his reservations about their treatment. However, Onaka was able to convince Boba to tell the Jedi everything, saying that Jango would want his son to do the honorable thing. It worked. The hostages were rescued. While Singh managed to get to Slave One, and it almost took off. But the Tano caught on the ship and damaged it enough to cause it to crash. The ship collapsed in a fiery explosion, and the Jedi assumed Singh was dead. But she survived. Boba and Bosk, taken into custody, were sent to Coruscant for their imprisonment. Windu eventually met with Boba, and Boba apologized for his actions and the destruction he had caused, but vowed that he would never forgive Windu for killing his father. Boba was imprisoned on Coruscant. During his incarceration, a plan was carried out by the Republic to foil an alleged plot against the Supreme Chancellor Sheev Palpatine. To do this, Obi-Wan Kenobi faked his death and disguised himself as a criminal. Rocco Hardin, who was suspected of making an attempt on his life, and went to the same prison where Boba was held. Kenobi teamed up with Moralo Eval, a suspect in an alleged kidnapping plot, and bounty hunter Cad Bane to escape from prison, in hopes that it would lead him to the heart of the conspiracy. As an escape attempt, Bane pits Boba against Hardin in a confrontation. Boba and Hardin briefly fought each other, before Bosk intervened and started a riot to protect Boba. Bane's plan succeeded, and Kenobi eventually helped stop the plot against Chancellor Palpatine. Shortly after the riot, Boba left the prison and founded the bounty hunter syndicate Crate's Claw, using Tatooine as his base of operations. He recruited Bosk, Dengar, C-21 Highsinger, and Lats Ratzi. 
One of the missions was on Quarzite, where they had to protect cargo in an underground streetcar from being attacked and stolen by a gang of raiders. Afterward, Asajj Ventress, a former apprentice of Count Dooku, was betrayed by the Sith Lord and became a bounty hunter. She killed one of her Oked teammates and took his place. The crew left Tatooine and traveled to an orbital station orbiting the planet, where they met with their employer, Major Rigoso, receiving the details of their assignment. The crew was to guard the contents of a chest being delivered by Otua Blank to the ruler of Quarzite by underground streetcar, as the planet's atmosphere made delivery by spaceship impossible. The chest needed protection from a gang of raiders, which is why the bounty hunters were hired. The team embarked on their mission by taking a space elevator down below the planet's surface, where they boarded a streetcar and prepared to defend the chest from the raiders. The raiders boarded the streetcar as it was moving and began killing the personnel. Most of the mercenaries were thrown outside. While fighting the raiders, Boba carelessly toppled a chest, exposing its contents. A girl named Pluma Sodi was trapped inside, kidnapped so she could marry Otua Blank against her will. The leader of the raiders, Chrismo Sodi, was her brother trying to save his sister. Ventress and Boba began to argue. Ventress asked to stop the operation immediately and hand the girl over to her brother, because she was as much a victim as Ventress had been as a child. Boba, on the other hand, was determined to continue the operation. Ventress used the force to strangle Boba, preventing him from completing the mission. As soon as the streetcar arrived at its destination, Ventress handed the chest to Blank and demanded the reward, setting sail before the ruler could discover the contents of the chest. It turned out to contain a bound and angry Boba. Ventress released Pluma to her brother and regrouped with the other bounty hunters, paying them their share of the bounty. Despite his failure, Boba continued to run a successful bounty hunter syndicate based on Coruscant and Tatooine. In the later years of the Clone Wars, Boba was approached by Jedi Quinlan Vos when he frequented one of the bars on Coruscant. Quinlan Vos was interested in tracking down the former Sith who made the assassination attempt on Count Dooku and wanted to work with Ventress. Using Boba's information, Vos traveled to Pantora where he met with Ventress. After several bounty hunting missions together, Vos revealed his true mission to Ventress, who agreed to train him in the ways of the dark side of the Force. When Vos's attempt failed, Ventress approached Boba again at Chalman's Cantina on Tatooine in hopes of enlisting his syndicate to rescue her new partner turned lover. Although initially cool about it, Boba and his fellow bounty hunters later accepted the job from Ventress after she offered to pay 250,000 credits up front. Satisfied, Boba and his allies joined the mission to rescue Vos. However, Dooku defeated Fett and his fellow bounty hunters with relative ease, and Ventress's attempt to save Vos ended in failure. Defeated but alive, Boba and his team retreated. Boba was able to reclaim his father's armor and ship, and then immersed himself entirely in the work of a thug, carrying out the most brutal orders. Boba quickly realized that working for Jabba the Hutt was the most lucrative, so he settled under his wing and tolerated the vile hut for a huge fee. It may seem like Boba Fett is as noble a warrior as Din Djarin, but that's not the case. Sure, Boba has a certain set of principles that he always adheres to. He has his own code of honor. However, behind the screen of a little nobility, Boba is a very brutal bounty hunter that has constantly taken on the most horrible contracts, collaborating with the Imperials on numerous occasions. Boba led the mission to attack Kamino, after the Kaminoans decided to rebel against the Imperial regime, from where he stole the clone's genetic material and gave it to Vader. He actively cooperated with Vader in an attempt to capture Han Solo. It ended with Boba Fett falling into Sarlacc's jaws during the show execution of Luke and his friends on Tatooine, long presumed dead. But it's not. Anyone would have died inside the monster, but not Boba Fett. Boba managed to escape, but lost all his equipment and wandered the Tatooine deserts for a long time trying to survive. For the most part, he adapted to the life of a Tuscan. The Gadderfi stick, the sacred weapon of the Tuscans, and their rifle, which Boba had, were probably given to him after killing one of the natives, as they never part with them. Boba made a deal with Din Djarin, 
protection for Grogu in exchange for his lost armor. However, Moff Gideon arrived on Typhon and sent four dark troopers to retrieve Grogu. After picking up his armor from Razor Crest, Fett explained to Jaren that it had once belonged to his father, who was a Mandalorian foundling, and therefore rightfully belonged to him. As a token of Jaren gratitude, Fett and Fennec Shand agreed to help rescue Grogu. When Boba had fulfilled all his obligations to Jaren, he stopped playing the role of a noble warrior and decided to take up a new business, finishing off Bib Fortuna in cold blood in Jabba's palace, taking his place. Such has been Boba Fett's long journey in the Star Wars universe.